Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I wanted to make a little video. I was taking a little break from the 91 shop truck, but we're taking a break while we're waiting on some parts that uh, we actually ordered the wrong parts. Waiting for the new parts to come in. It's gonna take a few days, so we'll finish that video up as soon as we get those parts in. Something I wanted to talk to you now about is because I'm getting a lot of questions and I've gotten a lot of questions in the past. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of things I would like to have known or if someone had told me before I started taking on doing uh, LS swaps and rebuilding these 88 to 98 OBS trucks. So I entitled the, the video, Things I Wish Someone Had Told Me. I have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're gonna, your mind is gonna be scattered. You're gonna be thinking, I want 500 horsepower. I want it a four, six drop. I want this, I want that. Come up with what is a realistic budget for what you wanna accomplish. What do you want the truck to do? Is it gonna be a daily driver? Is it gonna be a weekend toy? Uh, autocross, drag racing, whatever your passion is. Think about what you want it to do and what it's gonna to take to get it there and what kind of budget do you have realistically to work with to get it there? I made a few notes here, so if I look down, that's what I'm doing. I've got my notepad right here. Uh, when you're planning not only the money, uh, it's easy to get caught up in the minutia. You buy a, let's say you got a 5.3 or a, a 4.8, and for whatever reason you decide, oh, I'm gonna put a cam in it. Well, that's great. You can put a cam in it, get a few extra horsepower, but then while you're in there, you start replacing this. Oh, what about an oil pump? What about new lifters? What about this? What about that? It's real easy to add a thousand dollars or more to your engine when you had one idea that you wanted to do in the first place. Started off with a cam, thousand dollars later, you've got all these other parts. Maybe you didn't need them. Maybe you just needed to run first and you could do the cam later. Have your plan and try to stick to it. There's gonna be things that come up anyway that you had not planned on, I guarantee it. Something is gonna break, you're gonna need a tool, you're gonna to need a part that was missing. So to keep you on a financial budget that keeps you going in the right direction, uh, try to stick with it as best you can. If you look on Facebook Marketplace right now, there's plenty of trucks you can buy out there that have no engine or transmission, or it's something somebody's taken apart even if it's not a truck. I've seen lots of them, uh, whether it's Buicks or Mustangs, whatever. The cars are stripped, they're taken apart, and the the guy's project is stalled out, he's lost interest, and now you can buy it cheap. He thinks he can get out of it what he's got in it. He's not. He's not gonna get that, he's not gonna get his money back out of that. The project is like an elephant. It can be very complex and very overwhelming. So just take one piece at a time, work through it until that part's done, and then move on to the next. Otherwise, it can become overwhelming. Regarding the money side of it, if you'll go to a site, especially right now after Christmas, if you go to a site called giftcard.com, you can buy auto parts, box stores, gift cards that people got for Christmas that they don't want them or need them. You can buy them at a nice discount. I've got a couple the other day for 18% discount and I'm waiting another week or two and I expect to get 25 to 30% discount. There's stuff you're gonna need like antifreeze, oil, uh, a radiator hose, power steering fluid, brake fluid, transmission fluid, rear, get, rear diff uh, fluid, uh, little odds and ends and nets that you don't wanna order online, wait a week to get it. You just wanna run down to the parts store and get it then. Why not get a gift card for yourself ahead of time at a discount so that you're buying it cheaper? That's one way to save a few bucks. Another way is if you are shopping for specific parts, let's say suspension parts, like for this truck, you want an outer tie rod end. I look it up, I look up the price at about half a dozen different places. More than likely, Amazon has probably one of the best prices or the lowest price, assuming they have it. And if they do, I really like Amazon because if you do get the wrong, if you do get the wrong part, which I did recently, Sending it back and getting credit is no problem. There are other stores or even eBay that if you buy the wrong part, it's on you. If you want to send the part back, you may have to pay for shipping. It takes a lot more time. Uh, it's You better make sure you're getting the right part. 
Now another site, Rock Auto, is really good to compare parts. 88 to 98s were pretty similar trucks, but they were not identical. There are parts that were changed from time to time throughout that 10 year span. So don't assume that an 88 uh, lower control arm rear bushing is the same as a 98. It may not be. So you can compare using that site part numbers to see what fits what and what will work in your application. You can also use it obviously to uh, price compare as well, but it's a good parts source to look up parts that you need. Budget your time. It will take longer than you expect, guaranteed. Ever, you know, I thought I was gonna get to the front end of this knocked out in a day. <laughs> not quite, it's not gonna happen that way. There's all kinds of stuff that comes up like holidays, birthdays, injuries. Well, let's not talk about that part. Um, there's lots of variables that can come up that will delay your project that are out of your control. So while you're budgeting your time, also consider your space. I've got plenty of space right here, or at least I'd like more, but I've got plenty of space to work right here. But when I was younger, uh, I'd ask my parents, hey, can I get my car in the garage and do a certain certain swap or whatever I was working on at the time? Figured it'd take a day or two, maybe a weekend. It'd be in there a week or two. My well, parents were saints, they never said a word, but I know they were thinking it. So anticipate your space. It may be a situation or you're in an apartment, or you don't have a garage and it's outdoors, and the, the weather can change uh, a lot from day to day. It can be hot, cold, wet. If a project you're gonna do might take several days or week longer, anticipate a space where you can do it, or if you can't finish it in that length of time, a few days more isn't gonna hurt. <sighs> Doing this for fun is supposed to be fun, but it can easily become overwhelming. One of the biggest questions I get, or the, the broadest biggest question I would say, concerns LS wiring. It's really difficult to give someone a specific answer to a specific question they have because there are so many years of engines you might have gotten an engine from, anywhere from let's say 2000 to 2007, you pulled an engine out of a Tahoe. Then you've got a transmission out of an 01 and then you're putting it into an 89 that had a V6 and a manual. There are so many combinations. Uh, giving somebody advice, especially electrical advice, uh, through texting or emails is, is difficult. You can get close on a lot of things, but if you're describing something you have, I can't see it. And it's, it's difficult for anybody to diagnose something over a text or an email or even a picture sometimes. When you do your swap, do not cut anything unless you absolutely have to. Pull it out of the way, label it, strap it somewhere, tie wrap it, whatever you gotta do. Do not cut any wires at all if you can help it. You may need it later and it may be that if you have an electrical issue later, it won't start, something gauge won't work, it's a lot easier to track it down if you haven't cut back a bunch of wiring or removed it than if it's all there and you simply haven't found that wire yet. Along with the wiring, uh, this is something I wanna show you. Before you start working on your truck, let me show you what you need. Before you start working on your truck, you need to buy one of these. Now, I do not make any money off this. This is simply part of my collection. These are genuine GM manuals. This one's an 88. A lot of information in there. I've got 88, 89, uh, 90 somewhere, 91, 92. I got a 93 somewhere. Uh, 94, 95 are pretty similar. Even a Chilton manual is pretty nice because it does have torque specs and a number of other things if you're doing the suspension that you need. But something that will help you, help you when you're researching, I buy these usually off eBay. The 89 Chevrolet and the 89 GMC, the only difference between these manuals is the cover. Everything else about these, these two manuals for the same year are exactly the same. So when you do your research, don't just check out Chevrolet, but check out GMC as well. You may find one. I got this one for considerably less than this one. 
also looking inside, for example, check out these schematics. Man, that is nice. That's just one out of the whole book. This is under the hood. This is why you need the manuals. Pick them up. They range anywhere from 20 bucks to whatever you can afford to pay. It, it sounds kind of pricey. It is not. These manuals are worth their weight in gold. You will be glad the first time you have to use it, whatever you paid for it, that you had it. Buy it. It is a, an investment in yourself. It will save you tons of time and money because you could do a lot of research yourself. When you first start uh, taking the wiring off of this truck or the LS wiring, you start splitting the loom and separating all these wires, you're gonna get overwhelmed. And you're gonna start wondering, what have I gotten into? Can I do this? Do I just send the harness off and have someone do it? Do I do it myself? What, you know, what, are, my, what are my choices? What are my options? Do I wanna just throw my hands up and walk away from it? It's easy to have happen. So just take it one step at a time. Modifying your harness is not that difficult. We're gonna do it for this truck and I'll show you how. But if you'll go to lt1swap.com, there's some great schematics on there and how-tos on repinning the PCM in the 2000 and up uh, computers that, uh, that you'd be using on the Gen 3, primarily Gen 3, they got them Gen 4 too, but I prefer Gen 3s. They show you how to pin all that, what to get rid of, what to keep. And then the wires, even if you were to send your harness off and have it modified, when you get it back, of course, it's going to connect to the few sensors you do still have. But there's going to be a handful of wires, probably seven or eight, depending on, depending on your options and the things you want on it. There's going to be a number of wires, a handful, that are labeled or not where they go and what they need to be attached to. That will have to be spliced in. Those are the ones that are most confusing. If you get these manuals, it makes finding that much easier. Also, when you look at a handful of wires and go, oh my gosh, where do all these go? Don't let it freak you out. Separate each wire, label it with where it needs to go, whether it's your uh, TCC for your brake signal, for your, uh, uh, that'll be for your torque converter, electronic torque, torque converter. Uh, it'll be for your speedometer, it'll be for your uh, tachometer, your uh, speedometer, oil pressure, all these, all these uh, different lines. Label what they are and then simply take them one at a time. Forget the rest, take one wire at a time, research it, run it where it needs to go or where you feel like it needs to go. Make note of what you've done because in the future, you're gonna to have to work on this vehicle again at some point, or someone else is. And if under the hood is a wiring mess, most mechanics won't wanna to touch it. And if they do, they're gonna to wanna to charge you about 100 to $125 an hour. You don't want that. So make notes of what you do so that in the future you can refer back to it yourself if there's a problem and how to track it down. If you sell the vehicle, it's great information to pass on to the new seller so that he's confident he's got a swap that was done right. You took notes, and if he has a problem, he's going to be able to find the problem the same way you could. Be aware of the items you need to buy that have core charges, uh, whether it's an air conditioning compressor, uh, maybe it's brake calipers, whatever it is, if it's a core charge. Not knocking Rock Auto, but if you buy from Rock Auto with the intent of getting a lower price after the core charge, you're going to have to pay to send the cores back. And what I have found in my situation is, if I do that, I might, it'll either cost me $5 either way. It's not worth it. Find a good price locally that has the core charge. Or a lot of times Amazon doesn't even have a core charge. Just saying. And the last thing I wanna cover real quick is just your engine and transmission, or if you're just looking for an engine. It's real tempting to buy a three or $400 engine. It can be a nightmare. I don't know if you've ever pulled an engine at the wrecking yard. I pulled a few of them and I've got scars to prove it. I will never do it again. First of all, you do not know if that engine works. Why is it there? If the vehicle you're pulling it from isn't overly damaged, 
if the, if the vehicle's been rear-ended, then it's obvious maybe why it's there. If it doesn't have any real physical damage, it could be flood damage, or it could be it's been abandoned, or there's a problem with it, and you don't know what it is. And you don't want to go the trouble of a swap, only to find out when you turn the key and you got it wired correctly, it starts, but it has a knock, or it won't start because there's other internal issues. I would suggest it's a little more money up front, and maybe it's a little more difficult based on your circumstances. But if you can buy a running donor vehicle, that way you at least know the engine functions, how it sounds, if it smokes, if it leaks, uh, the transmission, if it shifts or it works at all. Uh, if you buy a used transmission off of Facebook, they'll tell you it's got new this and new that, oh, it works perfect and all that. You're not gonna know it until you've installed it and start to drive out of your garage. And you may find before you get to the end of the driveway, it doesn't work right. Or going around the block, it doesn't make it. So if you get a running driving donor that you can pull the engine and trans out of, you know it already runs. So when it's in your car and you've done the swap, if it doesn't start when you turn the key, it's not because the engine doesn't run. It can run. Something else is the problem. A simple wiring problem uh, issue probably. So I would advocate get a running driving donor. Look on Facebook Marketplace, check Craigslist, check local auctions uh, in, in or around where you live, uh, and you can find them. It's a little hassle. I usually get Tahoes and Suburbans. They go for cheaper. They're going for more now because of COVID. But I, I used to be able to buy them for seven or 800 bucks. Now, in my area, they're costing 1200 to $1,800 but I can still part them out and get a majority of my money back so that I can have the engine, transmission, wiring harness, PCM, every hose, every nut bolt clip, everything I think I need off of it, and maybe have anywhere from 50 bucks to maybe 150 or 200 in it, and I know it works. I know it's a little more hassle getting the vehicle, getting it back to where you are, maybe parting it out is not an easy thing for you, I have found the parts are parts sell pretty easy, so it's really not a big deal. So those are just a few tips I learned along the way, and uh, I hope that by viewing the video, I'm sorry it's taken this long, but that you've learned a few things so that before you jump into doing one of these projects, you've done your homework, you've got some manuals, uh, you have some resources, you know where you're gonna work on it, invest in a few tools that you may need, uh, a tool has value even if you use it once and you use it at your leisure. When you're done with it, if you're not going to use it again, put it on eBay and sell it. You can get most of all your money back out of it and it was a convenience to you instead of driving up to the parts store, paying the deposit, bringing home, hassle, taking it back. That's a pain in the butt. You don't need to do that. And after a while, if you're going to do more than one of these, then it definitely pays for itself. All these manuals, if I ever get sick of working on these trucks or I don't want to do it anymore, I can sell them all. And probably in the future, they'll be worth more. If not, I can break even. Anyway, thanks for your time. I hope you learned something. If you do, appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. And next video, hopefully we'll be jumping back into this truck, knock out what little is left on the front end so it's done so we can move on and get one step closer to putting that 5.3 in it. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.